Welcome to Vacuum Wars, where for the last couple weeks I've been testing upright wet-dry vacuum cleaners, sometimes called hard floor washers, and up until now I've never really had a good system for determining if one of these was better than another. But because of the release of three new flagship products like the Roborock Dyad, the Tinko Floor One S5, and the Bissell Crosswave X7, I decided to develop all new tests to see if I could figure out which one of these was better in a more or less objective way. I put all the results into a spreadsheet and chose two winners from these eight contestants, a best overall winner and a best value winner. So links in the description to everything I'll mention and let's get started. First, the basics. These floor washers all operate the same basic way. You fill their clean water tanks with lukewarm water as well as their included cleaning solution. The water soaks the soft roller either automatically or by you pressing a trigger. It simultaneously picks up dry debris like a vacuum as it mops like a mop. So the idea is that you can vacuum and mop at the same time. In addition to hard floors, the manufacturers say that they can be used for vacuuming rugs to a limited extent. They also advertise them being used for large, messy spill pickup. And while, as we'll see, that's also true and they are pretty good at it, it's not something I necessarily recommend for reasons I'll discuss at the end of this video in a section called my rant about the necessity of keeping these clean. Starting off with the power test, I measured suction at the base as well as unsealed or usable suction at the head. I also took into account their stated power output. I did have a little trouble with the Tinko S3 and S5 with the sealed suction test due to their auto shutoff features, which I couldn't seem to work around, especially with the S5. But all these numbers together told the same basic story, which was that the two corded crosswaves, the original green one and the purple Pet Pro one, which are virtually identical units, were the most powerful, with the Tinko S3 slightly edging out the S5 for third and fourth place. The Roborock Dyad was interesting since it had the most raw power at the base, even more than the corded crosswaves, which was surprising. That power didn't seem to translate very well into the usable suction test, though, where it came in second to last. And this would be a good time to say to take all these tests with a grain of salt. Though I try to be very careful and often run the test several times, I could easily be overlooking some setting or just making a mistake. A new test I ran was the Revolutions Per Minute test, where I used a digital tachometer to measure how fast their brush spins. Here I tried two different methods of attaching the reflective tape needed to get a good reading, and after a lot of trial and error, I'm at least confident that these measurements are consistent with one another. Here I found that the two original cross waves with the cords were again the best, with the original Tinko eye floor behind them, the two cordless cross waves, the Max and the X7 tied for third, and the rollers on the S3, S5, and Roborock Dyad were all significantly lower than the others, but about the same with one another. To me, there's still an open question as to how much a faster spinning brush affects the performance. I suspect it's not that big of a factor, but I also think it does play a role in certain tests, as we'll see later. Moving on to ease of use. This is a broad category that takes into account things like their weight, their swivel accuracy, questions like do they stand up on their own, are they corded or cordless, and of these eight products I like the Tinko S3 and S5 for ease of use. They were lighter than most, they had the best swivel other than the Roborock Dyad, they had the convenience of being cord free, and they were the easiest to use on rugs. As I said the Roborock Dyad had the best swivel. All the others had a two axis swivel which were all smooth and good for what they are, but the Dyad has a very smooth 100 an 80 degree swivel which can easily maneuver in all kinds of situations. The problem is that it also is about two pounds heavier than the Tinko's and because of that 180 degree swivel it can't stand up on its own. It has a kickstand instead which was okay but its weight and not being able to stand up on its own was a noticeable issue. Most of these are cordless and I have to say that's really nice not to have to worry about cords especially with these wet dry vacuums. The downside of course is that you have to worry about battery life. And here they were all about the same, between 30 and 35 minutes with the exception of the original Tinko eye floor. And those numbers are really good, much better than I'm used to seeing with regular cordless vacuums. I think you'll find that 30 minutes is more than enough time to vacuum most houses. One new test was the dried on glow in the dark test, which is kind of a torture test because the substance I use to stain the floor does not come up easily. It's meant to mainly test the scrubbing ability more than the overall cleaning, which we'll see is just as important in a minute. But here I gave the Roborock Dyad and the Crosswave X7 the highest marks, with the Tinko S3 and S5 just behind 
behind them. Another new test was the glow-in-the-dark wet test, and I think this is the most revealing test as it shows how well the vacuum manages the water in multiple passes, how well its squeegee deals with both the forward push and the backward pull in terms of liquid, how it deals with streaks when the roller gets dirty, basically how quickly and how thoroughly it picks up the messes. And here, the two corded crosswaves with their extra power and RPMs really seem to be the best. They clean the messes in about half the time, and I was more satisfied with the results than I was with any of the others. Of the cordless versions, the Tinko S3 and S5 were the best. They took a little longer than the corded crosswaves, but they managed the messes much better than the Roborock or new Crosswave X7, in my opinion. I did test them with large, wet messes as well as dry debris, which is something that I've always tested, but as far as I could tell, they did about the same with this, which is to say, very good. As far as the noise, the two corded crosswaves were way louder than the others by almost 10 decibels, which is significant, with all three Tinkos being the most quiet. The Tinko S3, S5, and Roborock Dyad got extra points for being fully automatic, meaning that they automatically dispense the water for you and even adjust the suction up and down depending on the amount of mess being cleaned up, which optimizes battery life. The others have triggers on the handle where you can control the water flow yourself and buttons to control the suction and brush speed. I took into account their stated water tank sizes where there wasn't all that much difference with the exception of the Crosswave X7 and original Tinko iFloor, which had smaller than average tanks. Some miscellaneous gripes included things like the Roborock Dyad seeming a bit buggy to me. For example, while it's not uncommon for these machines to be finicky about the type of water you can use, the Dyad was very picky. It gave me an error message until I finally used spring water. Also, I can never get the audio alerts to change to English, despite following the instructions in the manual many times. Another thing was with the Crosswave X7, where the handle kept coming out. I think I may have broken it at some point, so it's probably operator error. It still worked after that, but I think it may have broke too easily. All these units are made primarily for use with hard floors, but they all make claims to be able to be used for carpets or small rugs, but they're not all equal in that way. For example, I found that the Tinkos were super easy to push on my large rug at the house, but the original Crosswaves were much harder to push. And that brings me to my rant about keeping these things clean. They all get messy, it's just the nature of mixing wet stuff with solid stuff, and you'll need to clean its brushes and rinse the tanks and filters after every use in my my opinion. You could probably get away with just using the self-cleaning options most of the time if you're only using it for regular vacuuming and mopping jobs, that is with no big spills, which is why I think these machines are highly valuable. But if you're wanting to use it for SpaghettiOs or pet waste, I think you'll need to clean it really good by hand after every use or it's going to get nasty pretty quick and you won't want to use it anymore. With this, I think that the Tinko S3 and S5 had the best systems for keeping it clean. And it may have been my imagination, but it seemed like the S3 and S5 got less dirty than the others did. So after adding up all these scores, I have two winners. For the best value pick, I have the Bissell Crosswave Pet Pro, the corded one. And here I could have just as easily picked the original green Crosswave corded since they are exactly the same, except for the color and the Pet Pro has a strainer for a few extra bucks. But the point is that because they were corded, I think they had more power and RPMs. And I think that extra suction at the head played a role in the glow in the dark wet test where they did significantly better than the competition. They're also significantly cheaper than the new cordless versions, so I think it's a good value. That being said, I think that the Tinko S3 and S5 are better machines in almost every respect, and the freedom of being cordless really is a big deal in this situation. I think that the older S3 edges out the S5 slightly for my best overall pick, though, mostly because of the cheaper price and seemingly higher suction on the S3. But they both did well above average in all the pickup tests. They are incredibly easy to use, packed with advanced features and have high quality design elements where it counts. Links in the description to everything I mentioned and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars before you leave. Thanks for watching.